one of my pet peeves is seeing footage that was shot at a higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second or even 120 frames per second. And when you see that footage played back, it's it's just ultra sharp looking. It, it looks kind of generic. I prefer a more slower cinematic look at 24 frames per second. And just to briefly explain what's happening, if you look at uh, 24 frames per second footage, it, there's motion blur and it's very subtle. It's very hard to see, but there's a very subtle amount of motion blur, which makes it look more quote unquote cinematic. Okay. When you play back at a 30 frame per second timeline, it looks more like what you see on the news. It's a little sharper. It's a little faster. It looks a little more clean. When you edit something at 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, it starts to look kind of like sports, like a little too fast, a little too clear. It just, it doesn't have that same cinematic look. So I edit everything on a 24 frame per second timeline, regardless of the speed in which I film. So a lot of the times on my camera, I'm shooting at 48 frames per second or higher, and I will edit that footage on a 24 frame per second timeline. In this video, I'm going to show you why I do that, how I do that, and hopefully it makes sense. It's, it's a very hard concept for, at least for me to articulate. So I'm going to do my best showing you this, showing you some footage. One of the things you can do to help get some smoother footage is shoot at a higher frame rate on your camera, like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, and then bring it into your editor and put it onto a 24 frame per second timeline, which will allow you to have, you can expand that footage, make it slower and it will give you a smoother look. So just to demonstrate what that looks like, what I'm going to do, this is DaVinci Resolve we're using here, and I'm going to bring in a 120 frame per second clip that I shot um, just goofing around. So we'll import the footage into our project, and immediately you're going to see a dialog that pops up saying the clips have a different frame rate than the current project settings. Now my default project settings are 24 frames per second. So it's asking me if I want to change my project settings to match the frame rate of the clip that I'm bringing in, which is 120 frames per second. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say, uh, don't change. And you'll see the clip here showing 120 frames per second. Okay. Now, if we were to drag this into the timeline area, it'll automatically create a timeline. And again, my default project settings are 24 frames per second. So it's going to create a 24 frame per second timeline automatically. But let's say that I forgot to do that for some reason, or I imported the footage and I, you know, I want to shoot it or I want to edit on 120 frame per second timeline. Well, what I need to do there, I can't go into the timeline settings and switch this around. You can't switch the frames per second after the fact. So you just have to create a new timeline. So we're going to create a new timeline and we're going to go to use custom settings format and switch this to 120 frames per second. That's actually one, one nineteen point eight eight. And this will give me a timeline that matches my footage. Okay, so we'll go ahead and drag the footage onto there. And this is what the footage looks like. It's really bad. It's really choppy. I was doing this handheld walking. Um, it's just not smooth whatsoever. Um, I don't know why I shot this 120 frames per second. It was just an accident. I wasn't really paying attention. So now what we can do is we can bring the same footage onto the, and actually let me just switch between both timelines here. So what we can do is I can open up my first timeline, which is the 24 frames per second timeline. We'll drag that right there. And we already have the footage on there and I can play it back and it's still at 120 frames per second footage. It's just playing on a 24 frames per second timeline. I'm going to show you what happens when I expand the footage. So let's go back to the 120 frame per second timeline. And we're going to expand this. We're going to um, speed it up by like, or slow it down to 50%. And that should bring us at around 20 seconds. Yep, 21 seconds. So we're at 50%, 21 seconds, and this is what happens to the footage. You really can't tell, but it has actually slowed the footage down by half. So this is slowed down, and it's fine. It's a little better. But let's see what happens when we do the same thing on the 24 frames per second timeline. So we're going to go ahead and bring this to 50%. 50. I'll expand this a little bit so we can see better. And it might be hard to tell on the screen, but it is smoother. It's, it's slightly smoother. Let's play this back on. This is the 120 frames per second. You can kind of see the choppiness. And this is playing normal. I mean, my, I, I'm editing on a fully spec'd out iMac. There's no uh, choppiness on this. It's just, there's frames dropping and everything, but 
this is playing back on the 24 frames. So it's a little smoother. Now, now on my normal projects that I do, I usually, on my camera, I will shoot. I, I'm able to set it to 48 frames per second, and I edit that on a 24 frames per second timeline. So I'm essentially doing double the frame rate. So what that footage looks like, if I drag one of those clips in here. Whoop. So this is what the footage looks like recorded at 48 frames per second, but playing back at 24 frames per second. So let's see what that footage actually looked like when I was shooting it. So what I can do, I'll just create a whole new timeline, create a new timeline. 24 frames per second, good to go. Actually, let's make this 48 frames per second. And we will pull this onto the timeline. And we're going to actually speed this up to 200% because it's double the frame rate. Just so you can see what it, the speed at which I actually shot it. So this is this this is how I actually shot it. This is the speed. Okay, so that's the full clip. Now again, in my camera I set it to shoot at 48 frames per second but play it back at 24 frames per second. If you're using like a Sony, you, there's a mode called SNQ mode that's basically it's a very similar concept, same thing. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put it to 100% because, again, I told it to, sh to play back at 24 frames per second, and I'm on a 24 frames per second timeline. But you can kind of see how it makes the footage look a lot smoother. So same concept. You can have footage that is shot exactly like at 60 or 120 frames per second, and you bring it on to a 24 frames per second timeline, and then you just can adjust the speed. And we'll go back to the example here. You can just adjust the speed to get a smoother playback. Again, this footage was ultra shaky because I didn't even have it on a gimbal or anything like that. But you get the point. It does smooth it out quite a bit compared to playing it on its native frame per second timeline. Again, this is 120 frames per second timeline. A little choppier. Kind of hard to tell on this. Um, and again, if I, if I were to speed this up to... Um, 200%, which is the actual rate in which I shot it. This is what the footage would have looked like. You can see not as smooth. It's, it's smooth enough. It's on a gimbal, but not as smooth. Whereas if I put it to, whoop, put it to 50 frames per, or 24 frames per second, it's much smoother. Now, as a little bonus tip, you'll notice some flicker was introduced. There is a filter called, D, or a effect, I guess, called D-Flicker. You can just throw that on top of it. It'll take care of it. Of course, it's got to render a little bit. But for the most part, you get the point. Hopefully, this is helpful and not too scatterbrained. Um, it's, it's kind of a complicated concept to understand, or to explain, rather. So hopefully, this made sense to you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.